In this video, we will talk about affective computing. Uh, there will be two parts. Um, in this video, what is affective computing? Let us cut into this to that. Affective computing, um, uh, this particular uh, slide is basically uh, based on the papers uh, by Sidney D. Mello and uh, paper by Professor Rand Baker and also uh, some of the content is from the iMotion software uh, blocks. So, affective computing um, or sometimes called as uh, emotional intelligence or emotion you know, EQ. Uh, nowadays people are talking about you have to not just IQ, EQ also has to improve other things. So, what is this affective computing? Okay? Let us see a bis, uh, very brief introduction. Um, if you have watched the movie 2001 Space Odyssey, uh, there is a AI uh, called HAL. Um, so, with different versions, I think stall 200 is what is in the spacecraft. Um, in, a, in this movie, um, a bunch of scientists uh, travel to space for a mission and uh, this the whole space is controlled by a computer actually AI. And uh, the, interestingly, this AI uh, reads the what people think, what people are speaking based on the lip reading and everything, you know, facial. Uh, analysis and it also asks the people are you confused or are you feeling those kind of questions. This is bit you know it is giving emotion to the missions. Um, we, we always you know uh, the movie directors and the scientists always thought about uh, wrote a book about uh, robots, but it giving you know uh, kind of emotion to the robot is kind of this kind, kind of a first uh, movie. By the way, this movie is released in 1968. So, what is emotion detection or affective computing? So, let us see uh, if you want to develop a system and uh, you know and a device or kind of a system, the purpose is to recognize emotions of the participant that is the humans and interpret. So, first we have to recognize that there is some emotion going on in the face and interpret what is that emotion and why it have happened you know interpret. Then you have to analyze you know why it has happened uh, then you have to simulate based on the emotion based on that emotion you have to speak in the same tone or you have to give feedback. So, the artificial uh, intelligence machine the, or the agents in the uh, intelligent tutoring systems can show the simulated emotions in the face like a smiling or sad face is possible. So, how to do that in a learning analytics? So, this is called affective computing. It is widely used in a marketing um, and uh, also uh, in a basically in the management side, they try to understand the people's emotion when they are going through multiple problems and they try to provide some feedback or counseling that. So, it gained a huge popularity and uh, um, uh, in affective computing uh, after a technical report uh, 1995 paper by uh, Professor Roslyn Picard. And she also did a wonderful TED talk in uh, I guess uh, around 2000 or something. Uh, then please check it if you get time. So, it is interesting talk. So, let us think about it. How do we express emotions? you know how as a humans as yeah, express emotions. Think about it and write down two or three, three ways we express the emotions. If you can list down that, uh, those ways, then you can say how do you detect emotions when you are speaking with someone. Imagine you are speaking with other person and that person is expressing his emotion, how he is expressing emotion, how you can detect that. So, what are the modalities, what are the data you can collect to detect that emotion? Think about it and um, yeah, that is the idea. Uh, write down the answers and let us continue. So, you might have uh, thought about uh, facial expressions, uh, speech, the, way they, the speech, the tone changes or posture or uh, you know gesture, the, the body, uh, you know the the emotion actually indicated by the posture a lot, the hand movements, uh, facial expression is the key and uh, other things also important. Or also you can use you know physiological monitoring systems like a EEG, EMG or GSR. Or if you are asking the students to write something in the in the laptop or a computer you know in the environment, they are typing based on the typing speed 
or the words they use, the mistakes they make, so we can also the words and uh, the way they, they form the sentences also can tell what is the emotions. So, each uh, person have their own signature in forming a sentences. And uh, that's, that's all the channels you can collect data. And um, if, uh, if you imagine you are in a classroom, a student is talking based on the noise they make, the utterances, uh, the, the sounds, the noise in the classroom. You can say are they bored, are they, are they excited, are they happy, all these things you can, you can detect based on their noises uh, they make. So, you can collect all this data you know from different modalities. So, here the modality of expressing emotion is not just a face, but different modalities. If you collect all this data and analyze to predict students emotion that is called multimodal analysis. For example, uh, uh, you can use the facial expressions, then gesture posture and, uh, and also the eye movements or the voice to combine it to create the, to detect the emotions, then it is called multimodal analytics. So, the modality of expression is different. Uh, that is why it is called, you know, it is interesting field and uh, multimodal is, uh, you know, uh, gaining popularity. The Problem is um, each uh, census to detect this modalities like for facial expressions, um, the sample rate is different. You know, uh, you might have a webcam which is 25 frames per second, which means uh, you capture uh, the learner's face or the, the human's face 25 frames per second. That is 25 pictures per second. So that is you know uh, 25 frames. And if you use say eye tracker, uh, that might give you 90 hertz frequency that is it captures 90 hertz per second. Then how do you combine this, how do you abstract those information and how do you combine this, that is a challenge. And there are some works has, has been done in this field and people are working on it is kind of a new field. And uh, that is interesting to start with, but how to combine and sync is still a open ended problem. So, I would recommend you uh, to check this article uh, interdisciplinary review of models, methods and their applications uh, by Professor Calvo and uh, Sidney D. Mello and uh, it's published in 2010. It actually reports uh, data uh, direction, affect detection in multi channels and they have tables for each modality like a voice only, text based or facial expression based. It is a very interesting paper and um, we did not find any other paper after that mainly because not much work happened in the field of other modalities other than the facial expressions or human observations. Human observations or directing emotion based on facial expression is uh, focused more compared to other channels of data. Uh, mainly due to uh, uh, we cannot take this uh, instruments out of lab you know you cannot use those instruments in the real classroom settings. And uh, the, the recently there are a lot of portable devices are coming which gives us the hope that we can take these devices like EEG, GSR to the classroom and collect data. Okay. So, I would rec recommend you guys to check this paper, it is interesting paper. So, let us look at a uh, so couple of uh, this uh, data collections, one is body language and posture. So, there is a pressure sensor to seats, uh, but you see is that um, it actually measures the, if you can put it, put it on top of your chair and you sit on it and it measures the pressure points where the students posture changes uh, that has been recorded uh, that can be viewed and we can detect the students you know uh, body pressure posture can be detected. And, uh, but the problem is not enough studies uh, to prove its performance or improve it or to make it reliable. And uh, machine learning methods uh, uh, you are using the data collected from the, you know, the pressure sensor to seats has shown that we can detect uh, emotions at 83 percent accuracy. But the problem is um, if you try to detect a particular emotion say frustrated or boredom, it is not enough. Um, so, you know 83 percent accuracy may not be correct, uh, you have seen that uh, what is important is not just accuracy, it is a kappa score or uh, pressure recall values. So, yeah it is not really great, you can say 83 is good, but uh, recall pressure is not really great in the systems. 
and uh, the other thing is you can't take it to the you know you can't collect 30 students data in the real classroom or real lab you can do only laboratory experiments and uh, there are some other instruments like uh, electromyograms uh, which can be you know portable very like small and uh, this is promising that you can take it to classes or you can take it to field where three or four students are interacting in a laboratory uh, in the lab and they are working on something you can connect these devices and collect data or you know, EEG uh, this is a bit old um, even nowadays even simple EEGs are started with the four channel or eight channel or multiple channels to cover uh, you know, EEG data. Uh, there are a lot of research going on this field and it is not really costly the device is also getting you know lesser price it, it was really huge uh, like high cost when it kind of you know portable things are started coming. So now it is easy to collect this data so uh, going further we might collect more data using these kind of uh, you know, physiological sensors also EDA and uh, in fact uh, most of the uh, smart watches um, or uh, Mayo band you might have seen Mayo band it is discontinued which collects a lot of data about you know accelerometer the, 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 you know, the rotation everything can be collected based on that we can even detect the, the students uh, you know um, posture what are they thinking what are they doing all this data can be collected then we can automatically detect uh, students uh, posture gesture to uh, detecting their affective states. So, these are the some sample physiological sensors I just want to show. And uh, the key part is uh, as I mentioned facial uh, expression analysis. We will look into it in detail in a next video, but let us start getting introduced. Uh, in a facial effect analysis, uh, we want to uh, observe the learner's face and uh, detect and classify the emotion, you know, are you, are you, ang are you, are you, you know, anger, are you having fear? or are you surprised or sadness something like that. Paul Ekman, uh, Professor Paul Ekman actually did a cross cultural research um, in, a, in, a, in a Papua New Guinea uh, island uh, where the aboriginal peoples that is the people who are not really you know came to the modern world they are still living in a you know, old culture, old tradition, they, the emotions, the fake emotions not there, they show the real emotions. So, he went to the Papua New Guinea island and he collected students, the, uh, not students, he collected people's uh, face and uh, he did a lot of study. Then he, he reported that based on the emotions uh, from the facial expressions, we can detect uh, emotions. The six emotions, the basic emotions he reported is anger, disgust, fear, happiness, sadness and surprise. This is 1960. And uh, he did a lot of study after that databases available, the reports how to detect the emotions all publicly available. If, uh, Paul Ekman's facial analysis coding system has become very famous. Um, and uh, what Paul Ekman suggests these emotions, these facial expressions are you know generalizable and it is not that the emotion by Indian continent people will be different from uh, you know, other, other country people. Uh, people usually think that uh, Asian people show uh, less emotions or they do not show emotion something like that. I am not talking about South Asian people. Then uh, it is not true. So, Paul Ekman says it is not true. Although it is true that if I am observing the Indian participants, I would be able to observe better than how I observing uh, parties from, from non-India like non like from America or from Europe. So, I may not be able to detect emotions correctly. So, that is kind of established, but the emotion uh, expression is kind of a generic there have been a lot of studies conducted and it is proved that ok. So, do not worry that um, these reports are for the you know other countries or uh, not for India, no that is not true, it is possible to use those um, uh, use these kind of uh, rubrics to detect emotions in Indian students also. So, it is interesting question now, why do you think we have to um, think about affective computing in learning analytics? So, I was telling that uh, learning analytics we also how to collect uh, affective computing what is the data, but why do you think we have to do that? And uh, so, think about it write down list down two or three answers. Um, Please pause this video after writing it down. Please assume to continue. So you might have uh, got many answers. Uh, the main reason is um, 
can we understand students learning without emotion is it even possible it's a question um, are the student learning uh, is the stu is he bored or uh, is she confused uh, when she got confused so without that it's not possible if you are a teacher you would say no right can you, you if you are when you are teaching in a real classroom you know in a traditional classroom face face to face method you will be uh, you know observing the students facial expressions when you are teaching based on the stu students facial expressions you might ask them what is the problem or uh, conduct a short quiz uh, go explain more detail these things happens suppose you see most of students are bored or not focused you might ask them to stand up get energy or something like that right so that is important without emotions we cannot you know understand what is learning is happening so effective computing is very very important for learning analytics and uh, emotions related to moods and other parameters like motivations attitude interest but they are not actually equal you know they are not equal to attitude or interest but uh, emotion parameter can you know impact this motivation and attitude or interest towards a subject so understanding emotion is more important to know to keep the student motivated or uh, to keep the students interest high so that they can spend more time on the learning content so interaction between affective states and actions in computer learning environment um, in order to study the affective states in a computer based learning environment we can't use the six basic emotions we saw that okay so there has been a paper a uh, couple of papers we'll we'll see them in the next slide and uh, they try to understand what is the interaction between affective states what is interaction between boredom then confusion then frustrated what is this interaction when they are interacting with the computer based uh, learning environment and uh, here we can't use you know the basic emotions only so we have to use learner centric emotions like a boredom frustration confusion and um, um, you know disgust or surprise delight those kind of emotion has to be considered uh, this is called the learner centric emotions so in this particular paper the method of reporting is student self reporting we'll discuss that in detail so in this slide we saw what is affective computing and uh, basics and uh, you know what is learner centric emotions why it is important to consider affective computing in learning analytics thank you